Is there any competent software architect in my network who can explain to me, like I'm a five-year-old, what the pros of having customers and orders in a separate database? I don't see any. None, zero, zilch, nada, nope. Hey, it's Derek Kamarn from CodeOpinion.com. I'll let you decide if I'm competent or not, but I'm gonna give you three different examples and reasons why you would wanna separate your customers and orders like this specific example is asking for. I think this question is missing some nuance, some context, but the original author was not interested in that. So I'm gonna go right to the point and you'll realize that all three of my examples fundamentally come down to the same reason. So the first reason is because both aren't within the same system. Let's backtrack a bit and why this person is actually asking this question. Because what they're thinking about is say, let's say you have some HTTP API. Obviously we're talking about e-commerce and you have orders and you have customers. Typically what this person is thinking of is I want them together so that behind my database, if I'm using relational database, I can join this data because I'm likely doing some composition because I have to print out an invoice, some grid of orders for some admin purposes to show what the order is and who the customer is. This is where the person's coming from. But the very first reason is because these might not be in the exact same system. I'll explain why, but first I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context and fine grain streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So the pro, the benefit, is you're using an external third-party system because it's better suited for what you're actually trying to achieve. So for building e-commerce, we may decide where the real value is of what the system we're building is that front-end sales, that's what we're gonna build, and we're gonna leverage something like an external CRM, something like Salesforce, whatever, that's built for that purpose. We're not gonna build it, we're gonna buy it. So we're gonna integrate with Salesforce or whatever the case may be. So in this case, yes, we don't have customers and orders within the same database. Now the second reason is because you don't wanna build a large system that is a giant turd pile that's really hard to change. Now again, my assumption from the author is he's stating that this is easier that if we have our database having both orders and customers, this is gonna be easier than having two separate services with different databases that we have to make multiple calls to do that composition. And yeah, it would be simpler if they were together. I agree. It'd probably be more performant, less complexity, but dot, dot, dot. That's why I despise these questions that try to make it black and white. It's not because it context absolutely matters. Context is king. If your system was small and you have a low amount of coupling, then yes, absolutely these should be together. But as I mentioned at the very beginning of this kind of statement here is that if you're building a large complex system, you have much more benefit of them being separate. Let's say this is a diagram of a very large system and this is the database schema. It's kind of a hot mess. Well, if you have your client making some call to an HTTP API and your database has this schema behind it and you have your client making all kinds of different requests, doing all kinds of different queries that's leveraging that massive schema, what do you think's gonna happen? It's gonna be incredibly hard to change because you have all that coupling at the database level. So we have our orders at the top, we can see that order ID, we have a foreign key to our customer ID, we can see the lower table there is the customer table, the customer records, customer ID, et cetera. So you can think of these as tables, collections, whatever the case may be. Why is this hard to change? Well, we can not evolve this. Let's say, just as an example, we don't want a single email address. We wanna have multiple email addresses for a customer. That should be easy enough. Well, not really. If we have all that coupling and we have other places that are coupled to that email address on that table, collection, whatever, we can't just remove it. That's not gonna happen. We're gonna break everything. Integration at the database level is not easy to change. The degree of coupling matters. If you have a small system and say a dozen, even two dozen places in a singular code base where you can just change and refactor, sure, no big deal. If you have hundreds or you don't even know all the parts of your systems or other systems that are leveraging that database, that particular column, no, you can't change it. And we also need to make the distinction between reads and writes. Everything I've been really talking about is kind of on that query read side. My example of an invoice. Sure, if I want all the data together because I have my name from the customer, the order number, the order details, sure, makes sense. Whatever can make that composition easier. But 
you need to make that distinction because I may have an event store on my right side and that's how I'm actually persisting state are the series of events that got me to where I am. However, I may have that projection, that read model that's built specifically for, for example, my invoice where it has that composition. So I do technically have in that read model, possibly my customer information and the order details in the shape of the data that I want for that particular use case. So in the read model, it might be that way, but in my event store, I don't have the customer data necessarily. Now, why you might wanna separate customers and orders in that example and what the benefit is, which is the root reason for everything I've described so far is business alignment. And this is one of the best replies. Your question is framed from a technology first perspective, which is fundamentally wrong. I couldn't agree more. You should ask yourself if your architecture aligns with the business needs or imposes constraints on them. Depending on the context, imagine that context matters, some solutions will share a database while others will require separate ones. Makes sense? Then the author said, no, I asked a specific question with a specific example. When is it justified to have customers and orders in a separate database? That is the answer. And I've given a bunch of examples. To elaborate on this a little bit more, it really goes back to what I was describing at the very beginning when I was talking about Salesforce or some third party CRM. If we have a large service, what how we're dealing with customers in, in the context of orders are different things. So for example, within a customer kind of that context, maybe we have like a loyalty program. We have different uh, ways that we communicate them, maybe for marketing purposes. We have different levels of support and how we support our customer. On the order side, sure we have orders and maybe bulk orders, our, our customer interactions there for specifically for orders, product subscriptions or for services. In both particular contexts, a customer means different things. They have different behaviors and capabilities. What you're doing within that context, it's completely different. A customer in one doesn't represent the same customer in, in, in the other boundary. Yes, they're referring to you possibly by identifying the same thing, like they are the same customer, but how they're treated, what revolves around them and functionality is fundamentally different. So those are the benefits and the reasons why you might want to separate them. Should you? Imagine that. It depends on your context. It depends on the system that you're building. If it's large, then yes, integrating at the database level in a large system is very difficult. Anyone that's lived in a very large system with a large schema, get in the comments because you'll kind of prove my point of how difficult it is to manage and change it, especially when you don't have a singular code base that's dealing with it. You have kind of code everywhere, probably in different projects, different repos, that's also interacting with that database. It's a nightmare to manage. It's a rat's nest. If you can build different systems, integrate with APIs, integrate with messaging, it, they're bigger systems. They're not gonna be all within the same schema. You wanna manage that coupling. That's fundamentally what this comes down to. Manage coupling, focus on cohesion. As I say, almost in every video, that's really based around what's the value is and align that with the business. And absolutely, that adds complexity, but you're in a complex system. If you're in a simpler, smaller system, then yes, don't add complexity and separate these things for no good reason. But you gotta take all this with a grain of salt because you have no idea whether I'm competent or not. This is just my opinion, but I love your comments. As always, get in there. Let me know the systems that you built, how you feel about this, whether you've worked in a system that was really hard to change because of this, or it was kind of separated too much when it didn't really need to be. Get in the comments as always. Thank you to everybody that supports my channel, watching these videos, likes, comments. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody who's supported my channel through joining it. You can join my channel, the links in the description on how to join. You can also get access to a private Discord server when you join, chat with other software developers, links in the description. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. Please like this video. And again, subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.